Hi, Travis. Hi, Wayne. Um, this is John Whitaker with the Probability Graduate Level class, and this is our 23rd video lecture. This is going to be a little bit of a shorter lecture, especially uh, since our last few have been uh, fairly lengthy. But today we're going to uh, uh, extend and kind of write up a fact based on, two facts really, based on our previous work of the Yoga Academy problem. And um, Here's the first fact, which is just a summary of really our work. It says, suppose each of a Poisson number of events is independent classified as either type uh, 1 with probability P or type 2 with probability one minus p, then the number of type one events are Two events. So those two random variables are independent Poisson random variables Okay, I didn't write down what their uh, parameters were but what I'll tell you, and I'll write it down, but the proof of this was done for the work from the previous problem, from the yoga problem. Let me write that down. So the proof of this fact is embedded in the work But I do want to extend this fact, um, and I will prove the extended fact. So here it says, suppose each of a Poisson distributed number of events stricken, or not stricken, but medium, with mean lambda is independently classified as being one of K types with the probability that type is I being P sub I 
And here, I run from 1 to k. And the sum, as I run from 1 to k, of the piece of i's, they have to be equal to 1. So if n sub i is the number uh, that are classified, Classified as type I, then n sub 1, n sub 2, n sub k, all of n sub k, are independent Poisson random variables. just like the proof of the yoga problem, but I'm going to do it, except it's uh, extended. Instead of only two types, females and males, for the yoga problem, and that's what the previous fact had to deal with. In this uh, situation, we're going to have K types. So here, we start off by noting the probability that uh, N sub 1 is equal to N, uh, maybe N sub 1. Big N sub 2 is equal to little N sub 2, all the way up to big N sub K uh, is equal to little N sub K. Okay. That's going to be equal to, okay, the sum as uh, I runs from Zero to infinity, just like what we had before. Of the probability, n sub 1 equals to little n sub 1, uh, n sub 2 equals to little n sub 2, all the way up to n sub k equals to little n sub k, given big N equals to i times the probability that big N equals to i. And that's from the fact that we had earlier. And similar to what we did with the yoga problem, except we just have more types here. And where, e, where n is equal to n sub 1 plus n sub 2 plus all the way up to uh, n sub k. And that's going to be equal to... Okay, so... Uh, notice that this part right here, this uh, conditional probability, uh, it is going to be zero unless the i is equal to the sum of these. So really, this is nothing more. The sum is just one term. It's not zero. It's probability. n sub 1 is equal to n, little n sub 1. n sub 2 is equal to little n sub 2. All the way up to n sub k is equal to little n sub k, given n is equal to... So it'll be n sub 1 plus n sub 2 plus all the way up to n sub k times the probability then that this would be uh, n is equal to n sub 1 plus n sub 2 all the way up to n adding up to n sub k.
Well, we can fill in that last part because we know big N is Poisson random variable. So that's equal to probability that N sub 1 is equal to little n sub 1, N sub 2 is equal to little n sub 2, all the way up to N sub k is equal to little n sub k, given N is equal to N sub 1 plus N sub 2 plus N sub k. times, well, it's Poisson, so it's e to the minus lambda, at parameter lambda, then it's lambda, here would be to the n sub 1 plus n sub 2 plus n sub k, all over n sub 1 plus n sub 2 plus all the way up to adding up to n sub k, factorial. Now, how do we uh, calculate this probability? Well, what we're doing is that we have uh, essentially uh, little n sub 1 all added up to all the way up to n sub k, little n sub k, uh, number of items here, number of types. Okay? And uh, what we're trying to do is say, what's the probability that we have this, that, that, that they're uh, type 1, they're little n sub 1, and there's little n sub 2. Uh, type 2, and so forth. And so the way that that can be calculated is the following. That probability is going to be equal to, well, you have this meaning objects, n sub k. And so if you think of it, you think of uh, like lines, and you've got k lines, so for like the, uh, the sequential counting principle, you've got k spots, k things. And you're classifying them as either type 1, type 2, or up to type k. And so what we're looking at is the probability that you've got this meaning of type 1, n sub 2 of type 2, and so forth. And so what you do is you say, well, um, I want to have exactly that happen. How many ways can that happen? Well, I, uh, for type 1, I need little n sub 1 of them. Okay? Well, where can they be placed? Well, you've got n sub 1 plus n sub 2 plus n sub all the way up to n sub k number of spots for the n for type ones to be placed. So out of those number of spots, which is what I have here, you pick n sub one of them. That's the number of ways of placing those spots. And then to get those spots to be uh, the chance that those spots were filled with type ones is p sub one for each one of them because the independence raised to the n sub one. Then once you place those n sub 1 spots in those uh, k, uh, n, sub, uh, n sub 1 plus n sub 2 plus n sub k number of spots, then what you do after that is that you say, well, I only have n sub 2 plus n sub 3 plus all the way up to n sub k, which I need to pick n sub 2 of them, okay, <clears throat> times p sub 2 uh, raised to n sub 2. Okay? That's the number of ways of Placing the type 2 ones. And you keep going. Okay. And the last one is n sub k, choose n sub k, p uh, sub k raised to the n sub k. And then we still have this, e to the minus lambda, lambda to the n sub 1 plus n sub 2 plus all the way up to n sub k all over n sub 1 plus n sub 2 plus n sub k factorial. Okay, let's look at these choosings. So what this is, is n sub 1 plus n sub 2 plus, plus n sub k factorial over, well, this will be n sub 2, so I take this minus n sub 1, so it's n sub 2 plus n sub 3 plus all the way up to n sub k factorial times n sub 1. That's p sub 1 and n sub 1. Here, this guy would be n sub 2 plus n sub 3 plus n sub k factorial over, and then I take this uh, numerator and subtract from it n sub 2. So it has n sub 3 plus n sub uh, 4 plus all the way up to n sub k factorial times n sub 2 factorial. p sub 2 raised to the n sub 2 all the way up to n sub k factorial 
over, well, this is just one, but it's n sub, uh, it's, it's zero factorial over n sub k. Um, factorial. <clears throat> e to the minus lambda, lambda to the n sub one plus n sub two, all the way up to adding up the n sub k, all over that n sub one plus n sub two plus all the way adding up the n sub k factorial. Here's what I want you to notice. This n sub 2 um, plus n sub 3 plus n all the way up to n sub k cancels with the next column. And that's going to continue. So you're going to have cancellations with the next column. And what's going to be left is this top. But wait a minute, it's going to cancel with this one. And so what we end up getting is 1 over n sub 1, this should be n sub 1 factorial, 1 over n sub 2 factorial. All the way up to 1 over n sub k factorial. This guy will live, even though it was 1. The previous guy cancels. Okay. Um, and then we have this e to the minus. Oh, oops, I forgot something. We're going to have p sub 1, uh, n sub 1, times p sub 2, n sub 2, times all the way up to p sub k, n sub k. I forgot that P. P sub K, N sub K. I forgot that guy. And then we have E to the minus lambda, lambda to the N sub 1, uh, uh, plus N sub 2 all the way up to N sub K. That's where I answer. That's equal to, so 1 over n sub 1 factorial, n sub 2 factorial, all the way up to n sub k factorial, that's what we have. Then um, we can think of this as lambda, so we had lambda to each one of these powers added together, and so that's lambda to the n sub 1 times lambda to the n sub 2, so I'll just write down as lambda times p sub 1 raised to the n sub 1. Lambda times p sub 2 raised to the n sub 2. All the way up to lambda times p sub k raised to the n sub k. And then we just had e to the minus lambda. But I'm going to rewrite that as e to the minus lambda times the quantity of p sub 1 plus p sub 2 plus all the way up to p sub k. And the reason I can do that is remember this sum of all the p sub i's as i runs from 1 to k is equal to 1. And so 1 times lambda is just lambda, and that's what we have. And so I can break this up, if you will, finally, as uh, I'll rewrite it as 1 over n sub 1 factorial, lambda sub p sub 1 raised to the n sub 1, e to the minus lambda p sub 1, times 1 over n sub uh, 2 factorial, uh, lambda p sub 2, this should have been raised to the n sub 1, raised to the n sub 2, e to the minus lambda to the p uh, sub 2, we keep going with this multiplication. And then the last term is 1 over n sub k factorial, lambda times p sub k, raised to the n sub k, e to the minus lambda p sub k. And way of writing that, is uh, with this notation that the product, so we'll put a big pi here, 
And this is pi as i runs from 1 to k, a product of the form 1 over n sub i factorial times lambda times p sub i raised to the n sub i e raised to the minus lambda p sub i. So that's a way of writing it down. Sometimes. So that's great. Now, uh, what I want to do is I, I want to see if that is the, uh, that was the joint. And I want to see how do I get the uh, uh, individual uh, probability mass functions. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, the, as we did before in our example, the probability that n sub 1 equals to n sub 1, little n sub 1. What that is, is that the sum, as n, uh, n sub 2 runs from 0 to infinity, n sub 3 runs from 0 to infinity, all the way up to the sum as n sub k runs from 0 to infinity. Uh, the probability, if you will, this is supposed to be the joint uh, PMF of all the random variables n sub 1 through n sub k. But I'm just going to say that that's n sub 1, probability n sub 1, uh, well, it should be f, of n sub 1, right here. n sub 2 all the way up to n sub k. And now let's substitute what that's equal to because we just found it. That's equal to the sum as n sub 2 runs from 0 to infinity, uh, sum as n sub 3 runs from 0 to infinity, all the way up to the sum as n sub k runs from 0 to infinity. Here, uh, this was, what was that product? So the way I'll write it down is in that longer form. It's 1 over n, 1 factorial uh, e. Lambda p sub 1 raised to n sub 1, e to the minus lambda p sub 1 um, times 1 over n sub 2 factorial lambda p sub 2 raised to the n sub 2, e to the minus lambda times p sub 2, and we'll keep going. And then the last term, the last part involved in the product is 1 over n sub k factorial lambda p sub k raised to the n sub k times e to the minus lambda of p sub k. Now, of course, this guy right here doesn't depend on any of the uh, variables, indexing variables, n sub 2 through n sub k. So I pull it out. 1 over n sub 1 factorial lambda sub p sub 1 raised to the e sub 1 e to the minus lambda p sub 1. And then, um, I can pull out parts each time. Some of the uh, n sub 2 runs from 0 to infinity. And um, this guy can be pulled out just to this sum. Because they're not depending on any of the other indexes. Um, then the sum here is n runs from 3, uh, n sub 3 runs from 0 to infinity. Uh, here you could just pull this sum. 1 over n to 3 factorial piece of 2 piece of 3 raised to n sub 3 e to the minus lambda piece of 3 all the way up to 
this sum, the last sum, is n sub uh, k running from 0 to infinity of 1 over n sub k factorial. Uh, lambda times p sub k raised to the n sub k. And then this is e to the minus lambda uh, p sub 3, or p sub k. That's what that is. Okay, now each one of these, okay, you look at the index, uh, it has the form, so I'll just write this one down, as e to the minus lambda, that's this quantity right here, then lambda raised to the indexing set, all over the indexing set factorial. It's the same format as zero as the indexing um, variable runs from zero to infinity. That's what all of them are equal to. And that is the sum of a Poisson uh, random variables, P and F. And so when you sum them up, you get uh, zero. I'm sorry, you get one. So each one of these is one. So you end up getting one over n sub one factorial Lambda is a piece of one, raised to the n sub one, e to the uh, minus lambda, piece of one. Now this again, so I should say, so uh, n sub one is a, this is the uh, probability that n sub one is equal to little n sub one. So n sub one, b gets of one, is a Poisson random variable. With parameters, with parameters, um, it's lambda p sub 1. Similarly, uh, n sub two, n sub n sub two, all the way up to n sub k can be shown. the Poisson random variables with parameter parameters lambda p sub i. And now note um, the joint PMF, okay, will equal to the product of the individual PMFs. And so, n sub 1, n sub 2, all the way up to n sub k are independent. Song random variables. And that's what we wanted to show. So that ends that fact. Okay, I'm only going to show one more thing today, one more fact, and then we're going to call it this.
So the fact that I'm about to show, we'll do examples of this next time, but the fact that I'm about to show has to do with conditional expectation where you're not only given one random variable, uh, conditionally uh, one random variable given another random variable. We're going to find the conditional expectation of one random variable given two other random variables. And of course that can be extended. But here's what we say. The expected value of x given uh, y equal to little y. Okay, so um, this is conditional expectation, but we're going to consider it as uh, a sum as over w of the conditional expectation of x given y equal little y and w equal to little w. And then times L sub y given, I'm sorry, W given y. Uh, uh, w given y, dw. Okay, I didn't say the right thing. So here's a fact. The fact that I'm writing has to do with con computing conditional expectation based on another random variable being. So that's my formula. If uh, W is discrete, and that's what it's equal to. Let me write it this way. And it's equal to the integral. Uh, from minus infinity to infinity, uh, the conditional expectation of x given y equal to y, w equal to w, and then here is the conditional uh, PDF of w given y dw. Okay, and that's what it is if w is uh, continuous. This fact, and it's really two parts, this part is true in all four of cases. And this fact is uh, true in all of its four cases. When I say four cases, we're talking about the ways that x and uh, y could be continuous or uh, discrete. And so there's uh, four matches there. We've always been handling things where we don't, where the random variables are all the same type, either continuous or discrete. But you could look at them where they're mixed. We haven't been. That's been beyond the scope of the course. And so I'll say this uh, fact is true in all possible cases, but we will only prove it in two cases. Here, here is case one. We say x, y, and w are all discrete. Okay, so what we're going to look at is the right hand side of the equation when we have w being discrete. So that is that the sum over all w values. Expect, conditional expectation of x given w is equal to w and uh, y equals to y. Uh, L sub w of y, y, I'm sorry, w given y, the wrong thing. Uh, looking at that sum. So um, here we're going to rewrite things. This is going to be equal to the sum over all W values. Now, this expected value here 
is defined with discreteness. If this is x, over all, the sum over all x's, and here this is x, this will be m, sub x of uh, y and w, so this is x given uh, y and w, I'll write down that way. This right here is the joint PML, which is f of w, or y, w, that's where I'll write it, over L uh, of Y, F sub Y, so that's where I am. Let's rewrite this part. This is sum over all W, sum over all X's. Here, this is X. What this will be is F of X, Y, and Z, I'm sorry, and W, over, I'll rewrite this as L, um, so Y, W, be right this y w okay and here don't forget about the f uh, y w f sub y of y okay that's just following the definitions of these conditional probability mass functions that we have for more than one variable involved this is the sum over w sum over x's here these two guys this should be, here I should have written y, w, will cancel. And so what we're left with is uh, x, f of x, y, w, over f sub y of y. switch the order of integration, we'd say this is the same thing as the sum over the x's, sum over the w's, x, f of x, y, w over x, uh, f sub y, y. Okay. This can be pulled out, but I won't, but it can't. The x can definitely be pulled out. And then I'm going to have to sum over the W's of L, X, uh, Y, W, L, sub Y, Y. And when you sum up over the W's, uh, what that yields, so we have to sum over the X's, X's the, the F sub Y of Y in the bottom is going to wiggle on. But if you sum up over the W's, what that's going to give you is uh, f of x w. Uh, I'm sorry, a f of x y. Sorry. That's what it is. Okay. So that's how you get the joint of x and y when you got three of them, you sum over one of them. Okay, and now when we look at this, this is nothing more than the sum over x is x, and what this is, is the conditional uh, PML of its x given y. But that's the definition for the conditional expectation of x given y equal to y. And so we proved the statement we wanted to prove in the uh, discrete case. Now, case two, very similar, but I'll do it is uh, when all, when x, y, and w are uh, all continuous. So the right-hand side of the formula is we're having the interval from minus infinity to infinity. I think it was the uh, expected value of x given uh, y equal to y, W equal to W times, uh, it wouldn't be F of W given Y, W given Y, DW. Okay, so this 
So here, so we're looking at this guy. Well, um, this conditional expectation, so I write down this integral, rather than this conditional expectation by definition, it's um, the integral of x, and then here's what I have. I have f of x given y and w, x given y and w, um, that's what that is, and then it should be dx, and then here, uh, this guy is f of yw, and then over f sub y, and then that's dw. So very similar to what we had before, with summations, but now I have integrals. So that's equal to integral from minus infinity to infinity. Here we're going to have an inner integral. It's going to be from minus infinity to infinity. We've got an x. And then we're going to have f of x, y, w over. This is f. Well, y and w. Y, w. And then here, this was times f of y of w and f of y of y. Uh, I need something right here. I need a, let me pull this. Inside, dx, d, w. I can pull this inside because it doesn't have an x in it. And cancellations will occur here. Here and here. And so what we're left with is x, f of x, y, w over f sub y, y, dx, dy. We change the order of integration. I'll take my time here. x, f of x, y, W over F sub Y Y DW DX. Then I'll finally say, well, I can pull some things out. I'm going to pull out minus infinity to infinity. X over F sub Y of Y. So I'll do this kind of integral from minus infinity to infinity. Uh, F of X Y W DW. So we'll do that first dx, and that inner integral here, so I'm going to write down everything as is outside, so x, 1 over f, so y, y, and that inner integral, when you integrate the joint uh, PMF, with respect to three variables with one of them, you get uh, the PMF of two of them, the other two, dx, uh, just ran out of room, but we're almost through. And then finally, that's equal to, I'm going to rewrite it. Minus infinity to infinity, x over f of x comma y is what I'll write, f sub y of x dx, that's equal to integral from minus infinity to infinity, x, this is f of x given y dx, and that's nothing more than the expected value of x given y. So we have proven the result of the warning proof um, in 
those two cases, but it's true in the eight cases. Um, I'm going to call it quits there, and we'll do some examples of using this fact, I think, next time. Thank you very much.